Moving on to cruciferous vegetables. Mm-hmm. Dr. Another G's, one of my favourites. Dr. G's favourites are rocket, bok choy, broccoli, collard greens, radishes, turnip greens and watercress amongst others. What page is this from? Do you know? Um, page 345. Okay, yeah. We've seen how cruciferous vegetables like broccoli can potentially prevent DNA damage and metatestic cancer spread in chapter 2. Activate defences against pathogens and pollutants in chapter 5. Help to prevent lymphoma in chapter 9. Boost your liver detox enzymes and target breast cancer cells, stem cells in chapter 11. And reduce the risk of prostate cancer progression in chapter 13. The component responsible for these benefits is thought to be sulforaphane, which is formed almost exclusively in cruciferous veg. It's, um, sorry to cut you, friend. Is sulforaphane, is it something, so you've got cruciferous veg. Mm. It's often that something is naturally nailed. Do you, do you mix? Do you have to, like, how is it formed? Is it something you do you cook and you still get the same benefits? Is um, it, it does yeah. actually go into a bit more detail okay, into right, cool. in regards to that. I haven't noted it down because it's a bit more in depth detail. That's fine. It's in the How Not to Die book, which we've been reading, guys. So if you want to purchase, it's up to you, Michael Gurr. So just very quickly, because so, not that we skipped over it, but I know there was olive oil. Went, well, olive oil? Yeah. Olive, olives. Olives, yeah. Olives, olives and olive oil. oil. Yeah, so I mean, olive oil itself, I don't know if any of you can answer this, but I mean, yeah. is that actually healthy or is it unhealthy? Um, I believe it to be healthy. Yeah, I know. But I think I... it's healthy, but the olives themselves, what they were saying is not to eat too much because they're very salty. Because they're, they're, if you notice, I've tasted, I like olives, but they're very salty. And I think it's because they're soaked in a substance which makes them very salty. Yeah, I think it's so brine. To, good. Right, brine there you go. So it's it's recommended. Yes, they're good for you, but to eat in a certain portion. I think olive oil itself is, is quite good. Or it's What you'll notice in the book is, what I like about uh, Michael Gregor in the book is that he does say, look, there's certain things which might not be the best for you, but they're better than yeah, not yeah, doing anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think olive oil is one of those things which it says, yes, it's. I, I think olive oil is good or it's better than using your standard cooking fats. Yeah. So I think what this is, is one tablespoon, one tablespoon of oil can contain <clears throat> more than 100 calories. What, what type of oil? He's, oh, I'm reading is it, based on olive oil. So I'm, Okay, go actually, on. I'm, I'll give you, actually, I'll give you... Right, um, I should need to read um, part of this. I would classify it um, along with other vegetable oils as a red light, a red light, sorry, a red light food. He's talking about olive oil. Um, I think he's talking about in general. general. I think at the okay, moment, yeah, yeah. yeah. As they offer scant nutrition yeah. um, for their heavy calorie loads, one tablespoon of oil can contain more than hundred calories without filling you up. I think of oil as the table sh- table sugar of the fat kingdom. Table sugar, okay. And so, I think so it goes into kind of like going. It goes into some of the alternatives that you can use, you such can as use- water. Um, mashed bananas which I thought was a bit different right. avocado and can I stop you there please so one of the things I know uh, French might come onto it but I'll raise it because you've raised the point is what he says is he knows that like you know adding sugar and stuff to your diet is bad for you but at the same time say for instance adding sugar to kale is going to help you to eat more of it mm-hmm. yeah, yes it there's a drawback yeah. but at the same time you're getting the benefits of the kale that you wouldn't get because you wouldn't eat it otherwise so I think that's his point he's making Okay, French continue. <laughs> <laughs> I've kept the beast quiet. No, I was just looking at how olive oil is also a yellow, um, a yellow like food. But I mean, oh. gone. Okay. Amber, back back to cruciferous vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a placebo-controlled, double-blind, randomized trial of boys with autism. It's a tongue tester. Yeah. Um, found. I think this should be good for you, P. <laughs> <laughs> that, I was, that was not even a diss. Go on, all right, go that on. That was not even on, a diss on. at all, bro. Go on. The reason why I said P, because we both worked in the same industry, working in um, the workplace in terms of working with students mm-hmm. that have mm-hmm. had autism. So, yeah. hence, me saying this would be a good question for P. Um, yeah, basically, but where was I? <clears throat> Listening to fully booked, so full underscore e <laughs> underscore books on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Please subscribe to our podcast. It's important. We're on the podcast app on iTunes, any Apple device. I think it's pre-installed on your phones on your devices. Podcast, subscribe. French, you found it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. A placebo-controlled, double-blind, randomized trial of boys with autism found that two to three servings of sulforaphane a day improves social interaction 
abnormal behaviour and verbal communication within a matter of weeks. And sulfur things found in your cruciferous vegetables such as kale and broccoli, yeah? Yep. Cool. The researchers, primarily from Harvard Uni and John Hopkins Uni, suggest that the effect might be due to sulfur rain stole as a sulfur rain as a detoxant. So I think not not to leave you out of this question, uh, Mace, mm-hmm. but because again I know um P's background. Mm-hmm. Considering that there's different kind of therapies such as OT, occupational therapy, SALT, which is speech and language, um, speech and language, and PEX, which is picture exchange communication system. What's your take on the information and using diet as an additional therapy? Wow, that's a great bloody question. I was thinking, where's he going with this? Um, kale, speech and language. Um, I'd never really thought about it any way, shape, or form. Um, I think this is the last bit you need. So, what's your take on using diet as an additional therapy? Is that what you're getting? No, it's a very simple question. Yeah. But I mean, considering what I've just told you in regards to the study that's just been made as well, you know he's got a short attention span. Right? <laughs> this guy here. Do you to read it out again? You don't need to because I'm actually sitting here. Because the, thing, the things I'm thinking is actually. You've actually got to get these kids to eat this first and foremost. Yeah. Alright, so that's a ch- that could be a challenge in itself. Mm-hmm. Alright? Whether you're going to get these kids to actually um, have this food, alright? Um, I think it's a very, very good idea, but then I'm sitting there thinking lunch is just around the corner. Then you then they've got to eat lunch. and I mean, I think it's a good idea, but if you can find a way to incorporate it, then fantastic. But um, right. It's been a while since I've been in the schooling system, but I've got a lot of younger cousins. And okay. what I understand is from when we were in school and now, there's definitely a healthier interest at lunchtime. Yeah. In terms of, not interest from maybe from the students, but I know what's provided, they definitely have more of an option and it's more, it's definitely pushed forward more from what I understand. Yeah. And that's just from younger cousins I know that were in the school. How old are they? 13, 14, 15, okay. 16, I have a lot of younger cousins. And also, one of the things, it might, I think it mentions in the book, you know, like when we were young, we had Popeyes, remember? Yeah. Spinach, big muscles. Yeah. I was on that, bro. I think, I mean, we could, not us, but, you know, in this country, Society. we could do a lot more in promoting that. Just buy cartoons, your pepper pigs, and all these kind of, At the age of two, three years old, or I don't know how old they are when they watch that kind of program, but I know they're intensely involved in it, and what you put on there at that age, that can influence. That can help to influence. Of course it does. You know what I mean? There you go. Why they don't? That's another question. I, I don't know what to do. No, I don't sit there and watch Peppa Pig pops. But um, no, but I mean, I have um, young and a young niece who may watch all this type of stuff. Yeah, I'm not have you ever seen it with her? I don't know if they portray these kind of things. You know, the greens and all this. Um, I've never seen no greens and stuff no. like that. And truth be told, the type of stuff she's eating, truth be told, she, she, like she can flitter as to like whether she's gonna eat loads of rubbish or not eat loads of rubbish I mean yeah. times when I say do you want me to go anything from the shop she goes no I don't want nothing which mm. actually surprised me but, I mean, and then what kind of stuff was she asked for I doubt she asked for broccoli no she ain't your crucifix no 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 she ain't she ain't, she ain't. <laughs> yeah. no, no I can't really say she's asking yeah. for any broccoli and all that type of yeah, stuff but yeah. I mean you got to put that down to yeah. A what's going on at home um, which we've all got to take responsibility for but at the same yeah. time what's going on in school yeah. cool Cool, um, what? I didn't mean, you got a question to ask yourself, to answer yourself. No, we're moving on to greens. <laughs> Alright, you're asking this right. Dr. G's Pause it, let me favourite ask. greens <laughs> yeah. are rocket, beetroot, greens, kale, BG, blue, blue, green and red, Yeah. sorrel, spinners, etc. Mm-hmm. On page three, um, 351, mm-hmm. he does mention, I think we may have discussed it at one point, where yeah. it was on air or off air, of too much um, of a good thing being bad. What's been the main interest or message taken from the book thus far? The main message? Yeah, this far. I think it's very simple. Eat more greens. From the book as a whole? Or just that chapter you're referring um, to? Yeah, I mean, as I said, so far. So, um, not entirely well, the whole book because yeah, we haven't gone through well, it all yet. Thus far, it's the ho- a whole plant-based diet will... A improve your life and B um su- uh, not sustain. What's the lo- lo- so prolong yeah. prolong your life? Yeah. C will help to fight against any diseases which A you might have um under 
you know, underlying, you underlying, or B, you might be fighting against using any kind of prescribed drugs. Mm -hmm. That's the message I'm getting at the moment. A healthier lifestyle yeah. by eating whole plant-based foods. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. What's the What's the kind of common theme you're feeling? Yeah, no, exactly the same. Literally, um, plant-based food is is if you want. It. Not not even to say if you want to live longer, but just to live healthier. Yeah. I mean we don't know when we're going to go mm -hmm. do you know what I mean but I would like to whenever I do go I would like to be as healthy as possible so this book is giving me um, tools to again going back to the traffic light system it gives me tools to use if I want to have a healthier meal or how can I make a meal healthier than what it actually is do you know what I mean like that's, that's what it's done for me this far. Um, <clears throat> moving on slightly, on page 355, three, five, five, there's a phenomenon called flavour flavor conditioning in which you can change the palate by linking a less pleasant flavour, for yeah. instance, sour or bitter, mm -hmm. with a more pleasant one, say sweet. Mm -hmm. For example, when researchers tried adding sugar to sour grapefruit juice, people liked it better, no surprise there. But within a few days, the subjects began to even like unsweetened grapefruit juice more than they did before the experiment started. Has anyone experienced this or something familiar? A hundred percent, a hundred and ten percent. It's almost a, a, like a, um, uh, condition yourself to something. Yeah. So, uh, random example. It's probably not the best one, but do you do you guys remember when you ever tried your first? Um, uh, I don't know, Stella, beer, lager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's probably tasted disgusting. For yeah. me, it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And my taste buds become accustomed to it. One of the things I used to do, so there's a drink, I think, if I'm not mistaken, called Foster's Top, where they put lemonade at the top of the Foster's. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, I don't need the lemonade. Like, I don't, I'm yeah. not a big drinker, but do you know what I mean? You just become accustomed to a taste mm -hmm. over yeah. time. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what that's saying. It's saying, okay, grapefruit's really bitter. Let's bitter. Let's add sugar slowly reduce the content of bitter or take it away and now we can tolerate the grapefruit juice or the grapefruit yeah yeah it's, it's, it's 100 percent. it's just with anything in life you just you introduce something very slowly very you know not much of it no. and then keep increasing it's with anything it's like with anything being a vegan. It's, like, it's like training for the marathon mm. you start with three miles you got you know three miles is a bit much but you know what i mean you get my yeah, yeah, yeah. you wouldn't start by doing 25 miles of training mm -hmm. you start with a mile and keep increasing up until you get to the day it's with anything. You just become accustomed to something. So that's cool. Training. You guys go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Where you push, when you started pushing weights, I'm sure you weren't pushing what you was pushing or running when you're on a treadmill, what you're running now or pushing what you're pushing now. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? You're right. Yeah, so that's called flavour, flavour. Um, flavour, flavour conditioning in the food industry. Um, moving on. Did you want to answer, P? Um, no, there wasn't really much to add to it kind of thing. I think Mason kind of like, I'm touching it. We're touching it quite well, actually, in regards to alcohol and stuff like that. And I think we mentioned it um, very briefly. I think earlier um, with um, kind of like getting your taste buds used to stuff. This guy, French, why are you laughing? I'm not laughing. I'm oh. literally smiling. <laughs> <laughs> why is I trying to take my iPad? Can I ask a question, please? If you want, pass your iPad. No. <laughs> <laughs> why do you want? To, why do you want to take you my said iPad? If I he said no. Yeah, you can ask a question. No, but you have like really good preordained questions. <laughs> and obviously a lot of mine are off the cuff based on your questions, but yeah. I'm going to ask one that you pre kind of determined <laughs> and asked you to answer it first. <laughs> Do you want me to answer my own question? Please. What, that last gonna one? He's going to pick one now. <laughs> Like, no, nah, do you want me to answer that last one now? Have I ever experienced No, I want you to answer the next one. <laughs> Moving on slightly, uh, other vids. Slightly or moving on swiftly? <laughs> no, no, slightly, just slightly, because yeah. it's actually other veg. Right. And Dr. G's favourite so other veg. So we off the juice of fairies veg? Yeah. Oh, we still look, okay. No, we're moving on to other veg, that's why right. I said slightly. <laughs> the other veg includes artichokes, asparagus. Ugh. I don't mind that asparagus. But what else? Beetroot. Beetroot, oh, peppers, carrots, sweet corn, garlic, mushrooms, and onions, etc. Do you guys eat mushrooms? No, I hate oh, them. Mushrooms. I saw that I hate them. I just don't see the point of them. No. Obviously, the book explains why the point of them, but I just, yeah, I don't. They're do just mushrooms. a weird texture. Yeah, I can't do them. Literally, don't, don't do them. Um, I got to stop drinking Tennessee. 
<laughs> Page 375. Um, which is the best cooking method? So, you've got raw versus cooked. Both are right. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> a number of nutrients like vitamin C are partially destroyed by cooking. For example, steamed broccoli may have about 10% less vitamin C than raw broccoli. Other nutrients, however, actually become more absorbable after cooking. For example, you end up with more than six times the vitamin A in your bloodstream from cooked carrots compared to raw ones. Is strictly eating raw food a step you would consider taking? No. Fox, answer it first. Sorry, I just hit you with a sharp one. Um, Fred, you answering this first. I think that's a good idea. I think you should put the Hennessy down because you really are. Who's got the glass in the hand? I do, but it's I'm good. <laughs> All right, French, where do you... Okay, next one first, pop a go. I think he should answer it first, actually. <laughs> no, it's too easy because it's a yes or no answer and he can right, get away with it. I can answer We that. will probably expand on your answer, but he will give yes or no and just say, P, what's your thoughts? <laughs> you know, that's... Um, eating raw? Nah, just raw? Yeah. Nah. I'm not a man to dip my celery and carrots into a hummus and eat it. That's I'm, nice, by the way, but I mean, I'm... Uh, but I'm not a man to do that. I'm saying, okay, you know. cool. All right, cool. <laughs> Sipping tea there. So Pop says no. What's your thoughts? Because you eat just a raw diet. Saying that, all right. So I was in Jamaica in September. I was in. Ja- just I, was in ja- now. I was in Jamaica in September. Yeah. Plug Jamaica's banging, by the way. But anyway, that is not a plug. That's man's <laughs> yeah. home country, right? So, and I met some. Um, I met this Rasta dude who was like he had a little independent store. Mm-hmm. Um, let's call it that. Just like under a trip. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> Very nice, isn't it? Very <laughs> <laughs> nice. So anyway, um, I walked past him a few times because where I was staying was very close to where he was kind of selling his fresh fruits. He was a vegan. He said, I'll come have dinner away one time. So I went there and had dinner one time and everything was raw. It was raw ackee. It was mm. raw. I can't remember what else he had. I had five or six different types of raw fruit and veg. And it was really, really, really good in saying that. But I kept thinking to myself, I couldn't do this day in, day out. Mm. and I remember and the, it was good and I know it was good and this is going to sound a bit raw but I went home and it cleaned me out mm. so we have a tea that sometimes uh, my mother makes it once or twice a year called Cerisy tea yeah, yeah, yeah well, and that will clean your it, it cleans your insides out but if you're drinking that tea don't plan anything that day or the following day because it's, <laughs> it cleans you out and it's similar to, what happened was all this ve- all this um, raw veg and fruit I ate for I had dinner there and um, it cleaned me out, but also I felt amazing because I could tell it dragged so much mm. shit in my body out. No pun intended. Yeah, it, it really had. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> and so, I, and I remember thinking, wow, that was good. But I, when I was eating, I was thinking, I'm not actually 100% enjoying this. Okay. So that goes back to the almost the taste versus health exactly. moderation. Yeah, exactly that. I wasn't hundred percent enjoying it. Yeah, but it's whether or not could I get used to it, or would I for, could I force myself to get used to it? That was again that was a link back to the flavor favor of conditioning. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean, so it's it's all interlinked in yeah. one way or another. So, so saying that, um, at this moment, I'll say no because I do like my hot, warm, cooked food. Yeah. Um, but could I get used to it? Possibly. I, I'd have to. I think I'd have to be in the right environment, man. Right? Like. Hmm. It's not saying that it's not a right, but it's a lie because, but possibly, possibly. Me personally, again, I, I I'll put it down to eighty twenty, eighty twenty being um twenty percent being raw, and eighty percent being cooked. Mm-hmm. If I was to incorporate it into my diet, but would I would I go fully raw diet? No, not me personally. That's not something. I, I would consider um, at this very moment in time but then saying that once upon a time when I was a full meathead and someone said would you consider being vegan I would have said no then so six months twelve months down the line you can ask me again I may have a different opinion, different opinion. so you made like a sound like a really silly statement or, or question when you mean raw like is it not warm is that like not cooked it's not cooked it's raw raw okay so the ackee was cold Raw, cold, not cooked. Okay. Um, I think. I mean, I think we touched on. It's, it's, it's almost like a the same arts question. But what or who is your biggest influence on your food diet? 
Who's answering that first? Oh, French, your turn. Um, I'm happy to answer it. I think um, my biggest influence would be probably the people around me, my yeah. social circle. Yeah. Um, not to say I'm a sheep and I follow, mm-hmm. but it definitely has an influence. Because I'll, I'll go back to, I relate it to like my business partner who turns vegan a long time before I... I didn't even know that. I I d- I d- yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, he turned a vegan a long time before I considered it. And when he did, I was like, that's a madness. And, yeah, I, yeah. and obviously, we've come up together, so we've always gone to restaurants and we've ate. We've, we've, we've dined out and ate a lot of meat from steakhouses mm-hmm. to burger joints mm-hmm. to pizza joints and mm-hmm. the whole nine yards. So I've always seen him as a, a meathead alongside me. So when he turned vegan, it was a bit like... Are you sure, bro? That's a bit. That's a bit. What that's, turned him? That's what I'm just. Saying. I don't know. I think it's just again awareness, information, come across information, and being aware, and and interacting with people that are already vegan. So obviously he's had that interaction. That's that's touched the nerve in in regards to him and how he sees it, which then put him on to changing his diet again. It wasn't a sudden flip. He turned pescatarian first, mm. then started delving into the more vegan and vegan side of things. But as I said, um, reverting it back to my social circles. Um, so he turned uh, pescatarian. Then I think my brother started um, having a look into it. <coughs> Again, at that time, I was still fully meatheaded. So I was aware of it. I was like, okay, so this is actually more of a thing now like people around me actually taking it into consideration and a few other people that I speak to here and there started saying that they're considering it so that kind of got my mind ticking in terms of is it just a fad is there something more to it then I, f- I believed I um, watched a couple DVDs and a couple uh, not DVDs who watches DVDs a YouTube, couple, a couple YouTube, YouTube things yeah, yeah. and from there it's kind of I've got more information and it's it's given me a lot of food for food for thought, so to speak, and that is where my biggest influence comes from. I would say my social circles. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Um, it's well, it's not funny. Um, but I mean, I would say probably very similar to yourself. Probably maybe my social circle, but I mean, I'm thinking my biggest. I would say. I'm going to say inspiration or motivation which either one we want to choose it's probably myself in that I I have a I think I have an image and a picture of what my best self looks like in that I know what I've looked like and how I felt like as my best and not that I'm chasing it but I want to certainly get back to certainly what that looked like what that felt like what does that look like <laughs> it felt like money made with a boy that's what it felt like it felt like money that's what it felt like what it looked like boy <laughs> felt chiselled no so, yeah I just want to get I want to get back to that I thought yeah. yeah I'm a bit way off it truth be told actually what I was actually interested in potentially doing is in some way shape or form whether I'm able to keep up to the challenge is actually kind of like document dare I say maybe some of the stuff I eat and, and document some of the stuff I eat and stuff like that because plug. I'm certainly intri- nah, not Tesco's the reason why I say so is because no, plug in yourself oh no 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 because obviously I'm interested I don't know if I've told you before I'm interested in doing white collar boxing etc etc yeah. and in doing so yeah I said I want like- you Oh yeah, well we've had a discussion down the offer. Yeah. In order to do so, I have to get myself down to a a particular weight because I ain't going in there um, willy nilly. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to find myself flawed. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm not trying to f- find myself in a in a sticky situation. So I'm gonna have to get mm. myself nice, fit, and healthy, which would include actually eating well. Cool. Yeah, so I'd, I'd say myself is my biggest. In, um, Your biggest influence. Yeah, biggest influence. Thank you. I was looking for that word. Pig. I mean, mace. Did I answer this? I'm not too sure. Did you? I don't think you did. Oh, I don't did think you did. No, I answered. Oh, first. I didn't, did I? No. Um, I? I'm the same level as you, French. Just people around me. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's generally people around me. Um, and I'm not no sheep. I do my own thing. Um, is I think me and Pete, as we was doing a bit of shopping, um, we got some... Mr. Some, Kipling's Some cakes. grapes and stuff. No, I was just going to run with grapes, actually. Um, <laughs> is buying organic worth it? Oh, because we broke. Um, it's a thing, we isn't bought it? we bought organic I saw grapes. grapes. I saw you bought organic grapes. Yeah, 
is is buying organic it's a thing, worth man. It. It's that placebo effect, isn't it? I'm asking. I, I, no, no. Okay, sorry. I'll correct myself. I do. I'm not. I haven't educated myself enough to know whether it's a placebo effect or whether organic is better. From the book, I've definitely read the book, and it definitely makes reference to organic versus non-organic and pesticides and so on. Mm. And you know, a lot of some organic produce because of cross contamination can con- can contain pesticides. I'd like to think in my head that if you're buying organic, it's more natural, it's better nutrients, there's less harm of kind of any kind of contamination of pesticides and it'll be better for my body. But um so in that respect, I'm gonna give you the answer this time. <laughs> stay away from politics. I'm gonna say yes. But maybe I need to do a bit more research. There's not enough in that book which can tell oh. me whether it's better <laughs> organic or not organic. It goes into a lot of detail about a lot of studies with other stuff, not with this. Okay, um, just before P answers, mm-hmm. I would like to put this in the air. A review of hundreds of studies found that organic <laughs> <I> produce <laughs> does not seem to have significantly yeah, more vitamins than studies, minerals. Anyway, go on. You tried to, you tried to <laughs> bring that out, do <laughs> I know, I know. Organic fruits and veg do, however, appear to have more non-traditional nutrients like polyphenol antioxidants thought to be because conventionally grown plants are given high doses of synthetic nitrogen fertilizers which may divert, divert more resource, resources to growth rather than defense so p are you prone to choose organic or over regular items while shopping? don't care Listen, this guy, cause just because he likes um, pesticides in his food, <laughs> listen, I want to go down the same road. Listen, after... All right, well, let's not really go too... Well, we're 30 years, all right? Yeah. So... Yo, speak for yourself. Anyway, continue. He's, you're older, all right? Continue. <laughs> all right. And take that back. All right. Continue. So He's jealous. I, ju- I, ju- I mean, my personal opinion is, I think... Well, let's not be around the bush. We've been probably having um, foods which foods which contain pesticides for many years. Foods, yeah, many many a year. year yeah. All right, and if you're to potentially double that, all right, you have you have no idea what type of effect that's going to have on your body in relation to diseases and stuff that potentially may um, develop in your body. So I think I'm not saying no. no. I should buy organic, mm-hmm. but yeah. I'm, but have you got enough knowledge on organic produce to know that it's better? For you? Um, that's, I, that's, that's, that's more key uh, to me. Well, this is what I need to know. Pes- do you want pesticides in your food? Oh, <laughs> is that simple? <laughs> that's what I'm looking. At. Pesticides or no? Pes- <laughs> that's what I'm looking at. How do you know more knowledge? Them <laughs> grapes, no pesticides. I'm fine. <laughs> that's what I need to know. Um, French. We're not moving on. <laughs> You know what? I was going to actually add a tidbit just to, to go off what P was saying. Based on its elevated antioxidant levels, organic produce may be considered 20 to 40% healthier than the equivalent of adding one or two servings worth to a five a day regime. But organic produce may be 40% more expensive. So, for the same money, you could just buy the extra servings worth of conventional produce. Mm-hmm. Moving on to flax seeds, page three eight three recipe for flax seeds crackers, and uh, just just on a side note, yeah. I've been eating loads more flax seeds and things of that nature. I've, them downstairs, I've been yeah. adding, yeah, I think there's a tub I bought from a certain supermarket that has flax seeds and chia seeds mix, mix. and I tend to just put it, throw just it on throw it on top of everything. everything. Yeah, yeah everything. I think I've been getting it in. Yeah, you can get your front of everything. Um, yeah, so, so going on to nuts and seeds. Some of Dr. G's Dr. G's favourite nuts and seeds include almonds, Brazil nuts, chia seeds, hemp seeds, pecan, sesame seeds, etc. <coughs> on three, page 385, it says, So instead of trying to make your day longer, why not make your life longer by an extra two years? That's, how about, that's about how long your lifespan may be increased by eating nuts regularly. One handful... 30 grams for five or more days a week. The global burden of disease study calculated, calculated that not eating nuts and seeds was the third leading dietary risk factor for death and dis- disability in the world, killing more people than processed meat consumption. Insufficient nut and seed intake is thought to lead to the deaths of millions of people every year, 15 times more than all those who, are, who die from overdoses of heroin, crack cocaine and all other illicit drugs, drugs combined. On page 392, a clinical study 
<laughs> found that men who ate three to four handfuls of pistachios a day for three weeks experienced a significant improvement in blood flow through the penis, accompanied by mm. significant thermal erections. The researchers concluded that three weeks of pistachios resulted in a significant improvement in erectile function, which without any side effects. And this is not just a male issue. Women with high cholesterol levels report significantly lower arousal, orgasm, lubrication and sexual satisfaction. Um, just to touch on briefly, uh, whole, well not briefly, but whole grains. And some of Dr. G's favourite whole grains are barley, brown rice, millet, millet, oats, popcorn, canola and rye. Um, and I, I was meant to mention this on some of the other things, but um, it does mention the servings that you should be having. Oh yeah, how much? Yeah. And for whole grains, it's, it's got down half an English muffin or bagel, or is equivalent to thirty grams of popcorn, equivalent to fifty grams of cold cereal, or equivalent of hundred grams of pasta. And you're meant to have three servings of that in the day, so that's quite basically in. Um, breakfast, lunch and dinner now I think we may have even touched on it briefly but it's something that's a bit of a buzzword in the industry and just in general when we're talking about food which is the word gluten now gluten is a group of proteins found in certain grains including wheat, barley and rye. Celiac disease is a relatively rare though affecting less than 1% of the population for the more than 99% of the rest of us who don't have the disorder, is gluten okay or indeed health promoting like other plant proteins? In 1980, researchers in England reported a series of women suffering from chronic diarrhea who were cured by a gluten free diet, mm -hmm. yet none of the women had evidence of celiac disease. They appeared to have some sort of non celiac gluten sensitivity. In fact, Doctors commonly referred to their patients claiming non-celiac gluten sensitivity to psychiatrists believing because they were believed to have underlying mental issue, illness. Other dismissed diseases included PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, ulcerative colitis, migraines, ulcers, asthma, Parkinson's, Lyme disease and multiple sclerosis. So most people who are sensitive to wheat are sensitive to a variety of other foods too. For example, two to three of people with wheat sensitivity have also been found to be sensitive to cow's milk protein and eggs appear to be the next leading culprit. What's the best course of action to take if you suspect you might be sensitive to gluten? First off, do not go on a gluten-free diet. Mm. If you suffer from chronic irritable bowel type symptoms such as bloating, abdominal pain and irregular bowel habits, ask your doctor about getting a formal evaluation of celiac disease. If you have a celiac, if you have a celiac then go on a strict gluten free diet. If you, don't have the, if you don't have the disease, the current recommendation is that you first try a healthier diet that includes more fruits, vegetables, whole grains and beans all the while avoiding processed food, foods. Um, does anyone want to knowledge, mention anything? Knowledge, 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 Sorry? knowledge. Is there anything that you wanted to add? I'm just going to add one more part. Go I just wanted to, if you wanted to... Yeah, I've, I've put a bit on. Um, the five to one rule. When buying healthier grain products, like at the nutrition facts label on the package and see if the ratio of grams of carbs to grams of dietary fiber is five or less for example let's see if 100 percent whole wheat wonder bread passes the test per serving the package lists 30 grams of carbs and three grams of fiber 30 divided by three is 10 10 is less than five so the 100 percent whole wheat wonder bread goes back on the shelf even though technically it's a whole grain product would you use this in your day-to-day -day shopping trips I will now. Um, you know, I, it's no, actually that's a lie. I won't <laughs> now, but at least it's You're not. I, I'm aware. Cause, yeah, yeah, I'm a bit more aware. But I do remember I was looking at. I'll be honest, I was a little bit confused at the time, maybe because I'd done a lot of reading in the day. I know you mentioned. I think some of the mixed grains as to you know the, um, 
I don't know if this is the same topic. You know, you can get some. Well, like it's just half white, half, half white, half brown. Yeah. Well, black red. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing that I've determined from that is a whole lot of rubbish boys. No, you know, no, no whole grains. It's a whole lot of rubbish boys. Yeah. So that's obviously something I won't be eating from now on. To, to be honest, actually, that's something I cut out of my my diet and stuff that I wasn't really buying for a good couple of years. Really, I'm comfortable eating brown bread. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really me on the subject of um, whole grain. Yeah, whole grains as such. Was there anything else out of whole grains? Um, no, not really. Okay. I think apart from the obvious. Really. <coughs> That's fine. Uh, moving on to beverages then. Oh, gluten. I'm, I'm sorry, I got a bit on gluten. Yeah, cool. Next, so we're talking about um, whole grains. <laughs> That's what I said. Do you have anything to add, bro? Cool, sorry. Um, let me do that. Um, I think you mentioned this already. You mentioned obviously people who suffer from gluten, suffer from obviously diarrhea. Um, the internet itself obviously is, is rife with um, unsubstantiated claims about gluten-free diets that have spilled over into the popular press, making gluten the diet the diet villain du jour. And of course, the gluten. What does villain du jour mean? Um, oh, just villain, like diet. Yeah, gluten's a villain. Okay, yeah. Thank you, because I didn't know. All right, um, and of course, <laughs> um, so you had me there. And of course, the gluten-free processed and food industry today is worth billions has a financial interest in the public confusion. Whenever that much money is at stake, it's hard to trust anyone. So always, so as always, stick to science. Most people who are sensitive, sensitive to wheat are sensitive to a variety of other foods too. For example, two, food, two thirds of people who are sensitive, sorry, two thirds of people who, who are wheat sensitive, who are wheat sensitive, anyway, wheat sensitive, have been found to be sensitive to cow's milk protein. Eggs appear to be the next leading culprit. Yeah, so I wrote that, that wrong. Yeah, so that. apologies. Okay. This man don't listen. All right. Um, science is also always always evolving. Yeah. All right. So it's always very good to you know do your own research. Just so you know, you get stuff. edited out of this part. <laughs> anyway. Go on. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> and for the ninety-eight percent of people who have we issues, there is no evidence to suggest that a gluten-free diet has any benefits whatsoever. Who um, said that? Gluten, there's no evidence to suggest that gluten-free. Who said, who's, who's said that? Who said what? There's no. What did you say? There's no evidence to suggest a gluten-free diet ha, it has any benefits whatsoever. Yeah, and you said what? <laughs> Who stated that? It's in the book. That's what it's in. Yeah, but I'm sure Michael Green has quoted enough. Anyway, forget it because I know you don't know the answer. Keep going. <laughs> um, no, the reason. <clears throat> sorry, I don't know if you're aware of this. So a lot of people who tend to have a lot of or who tend to kind of like veer towards <clears throat> no I just said everything that you're saying okay cool so let's move on then French move on please <laughs> beverages Dr G's favourite beverages black tea chai, chai tea vanilla chi, is it chia tea I think it's chia chia oh it's chai okay. is it chai or chia yeah C-H-A-I so you don't know yeah it's chai no, I'm telling you, it's chai. Okay. <laughs> this guy's second guessing me. <laughs> <laughs> Vanilla, caramel tea, coffee, Earl Grey tea, green tea, peppermint tea, water, etc. Um, water. Um, it's on page 428, by the way. Mm-hmm. The eight-day recommendation can be traced back to a 1921 paper in which the author measured his own urine and sweat output and determined he lost about 3% of his body weight in water a day, which comes out to be eight glasses. Now, based on the best evidence to date, authorities from Europe, the US Institute of Medicine, and the World Health Organization recommend about two to three liters of water a day for a woman, and two and a half to four liters a day for a man. These recommendations include water from all sources, though not solely beverages. Did you know your brain is 70% water? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not that percentage, but I knew it was, it was made of a lot of water. When you become dehydrated, your oh, brain from? actually shrinks. Yeah, I get headache. I get migraines. Your hydration status may also... See, af- see? I even, I even go on. It may also affect your mood. Restriction of fluid intake has been shown to increase sleepiness and fatigue. Lower levels of f- f- vigor and alertness and increased feelings of confusion. Um, I know, P, you had a few notes on water. Is there something that you wanted to um, ask? Because we, we speak. 
I said, well, he's deep in my He's deep in my hands. <laughs> Sunken place, boy. <laughs> Um, I can't say I had too much. <laughs> kind of said it all. <laughs> said it already. Um, no, nah, I think I've got one last thing on it. There's, um, ex- I hope you haven't said it. Um, there's extensive evidence suggesting that not drinking, you know, da, 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 um, not drinking enough water may be associated with a variety of problems, including falls and fractures, heat stroke, heart disease, lung disorders, kidney disease, kidney stones. Um, bladder and colon cancer, ur- uh, urinary or urinary um, tract infections and constipation, dry eye disease, cavities, diseased immune function, um, cataract formation. Uh, it's linked to a number of diseases. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that you. makes right, you happy. Right, 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 what was contained in those? <laughs> Should I just not? Oh. Alright. <laughs> Alright, to wrap it up, let me leave you with these couple tidbits. Um, yes, drinking lots of coffee is associated with a longer life, but the effect is relatively modest. And last but not least, do not brush your teeth within the hour or after eating or drinking something sour as your an- enamel may be in a softened state and be further damaged by brushing. If you sip continuously throughout the day, I suggest using a straw to bypass your teeth. Don't tell them nasty people not to brush your teeth, you know. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ate that, I drank that coke two weeks ago. <laughs> um, yeah, so to, to wrap it up, basically, uh, I think the last part, he goes on to mention exercise. I know about that, sipping through the straw, by the way. That's something I've known. Yeah. yeah. Um, the last part he goes on to mention about exercise and um, that's that's the last section of that but I'm good to wrap it up I haven't got any more questions in regards to that we're going to do the book review yeah so, so guys so obviously you know already but I'll put it out there you're listening to Fully Booked on the Instagram it's full underscore e underscore book we post a lot of stuff on there leave your comments leave your opinions leave anything on there um, you can subscribe to our podcast. We're on SoundCloud. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Just hit us up. Um, you're right, French, in that we've got the book review coming up, so we won't go into the book review in this in this particular episode. But is there anything else in particular to part two or chapter two of How Not to Die, the book we're currently reviewing, that you wanted to bring up, Box or French? Um, yeah, I mean, just a little bit, just in regards to. I mean, I think it's something that you've championed. I'm going to say. Throughout, champion, champion, probably throughout the book. Yeah, I mean that. I think balance is really, really important because I think he goes on to say, "I'm I'm really honest." I mean, the theme throughout chapter two was balance, really, and that I think in the conclusion of the book, he talks about one of his friends passing, and I think I don't want to say the story kind of behind the passing was you can eat as healthy as you want, but you can get knocked over by a bus (laughs) any given day of the week. (laughs) (laughs) So kind of like he was kind of saying like just ensure you enjoy your enjoy, life yeah, enjoy is something to wrap up for the book review I feel so do I that's cool that's not a problem oh. <laughs> yeah, that's for those who read the book but I mean yeah <laughs> for those who read the book we can actually do that to, we can do that in the book review okay. alright all right, let's wrap it up bro. guys alright guys all right, fully booked thank yeah. you amazing amazing episode um Thanks for listening. Fully booked. Book review is coming soon, coming shortly. Stay tuned. Um, and we're going to have another special guest. We're going to actually be filming the book review. Or, sorry, we're going to be actually conducting the book review podcast somewhere else. Um, is it Adam Meat? So, yeah, I'll give you the spoiler. We're going to be we're gonna be eating with Adam Meats. He's on Instagram also. Do you know his plug um, for Instagram, French? Adam Meats. Adam Eats on Instagram. <laughs> you, you see him, like, yeah. Adam So we're going to be eating with him, conducting a book review with him. So look out for that. And yeah, it's been, we've we've wrapped up uh, part two or, of How Not to Die by Michael Greger and so on. Michael Greger. Michael Greger. Michael Greger. Jeans, though. Um, <laughs> thanks for listening. Can we wrap it up, please? Mace, <laughs> French, Pox, yeah, done, done deal. Yeah, done, done deal. Done deal.